Hello everyone. So in this video, we'll be looking at an all ceramic preparation done on a maxillary central incisor. So the maxillary central incisor, one of the most common tooth to receive an all ceramic restoration, be it Emax or Zirconia. The success of the all ceramic restoration primarily depends upon how well the preparation has been done. Of course, all ceramic restorations help us produce good aesthetics, but the durable durability and the longevity of the restoration primarily depends on how good the preparation is. So before we begin with the preparation, there are certain guidelines, especially regarding the amount of reduction that has to be done on each aspect of the tooth. So the labial reduction would range somewhere between 1.2 to 1.7 mm, whereas the interproximal reduction would be to just to break the contact and provide adequate taper. So this labial reduction varies because 1.2 mm would be sufficient at the cervical margin where the tooth portion is completely narrow, whereas at the incisal portion, a 1.7 mm reduction is adequate. In the lingual preparation, we do the lingual axial wall preparation and the lingual fossa reduction using a flattened taper diamond and a football diamond. A reduction of about 1 to 1.2 mm should, should be sufficient. The incisal preparation is around 2 mm. We go about complete reduction of 2 mm on the incisal aspect and the lingual wall height that we be providing should be around 2 mm in height. So these are some of the commonest reduction guidelines before we prepare the teeth that has to be kept in mind. And the steps that I have followed in this preparation are, I start with the labial reduction, then I move on to the interproximal reduction, then I move on to the lingual reduction, then finally I do the incisal reduction. So I, I like to keep my incisal reduction towards the end and I have explained in the later half of this video as to why I choose to do that. Then once the reduction is done on all the aspects, I'll do the final adjustment to the finish lines depending on whether I would keep it equigingival or subgingival. And at the end, as usual for every preparation, you have to finish and polish the preparation. So these are the steps that I have followed in preparing this all ceramic preparation. So here we are starting with the label reduction. The labial reduction is done in two planes, the cervical one-third and the incisal two-thirds. The anatomy of the tooth is dictating us to do a two-plane reduction. It has to be kept in mind that the cervical one-third is parallel to the long axis of the tooth and we provide a shoulder margin. As you can see, I have not placed a depth cuts to begin my preparation. I personally feel that depth cuts affect the final finish and polish of my preparation so I do not like to place depth cuts. So the technique that I use to determine the amount of reduction that I am doing is either I like to use a putty matrix, a periodontal probe or the burr itself that you are using although the last technique is not a foolproof one. So while we prepare the labial surface we also have to provide the finish line here it is going to be the shoulder finish line so the shoulder would be around 1.2 mm at the cervical margin that's what i'm doing over here now i'm trying to start providing my finish line as well so one more thing that has to be kept in mind is that the burr has to be kept as parallel to the long axis of the tooth as possible. There is no need for bending the burr or angulating it in any way possible. Placing the burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth itself will do most of the reduction and provide the adequate taper that is required. And the preparation should be free of any undercuts. And as you can see, I am extending the preparation as much interproximally as possible without touching or breaking the contact point so that when I use a interproximal burr it would be much easier to break through the contact point and it has to be kept in mind that there is again going to be some final finishing and polishing so there needs to be 0.2 to 0.3 mm of the reduction needs to be kept for the final finishing and polishing that would happen at the end of the preparation.
so now once the label reduction is done we will begin with the interproximal reduction the interproximal reduction is done using a needle diamond as you can see so while using this needle diamond it has to be always used in a vertical sawing motion that means you have to use fine strokes and then keep moving the burr continuously it should not be placed at one particular point and try to go from buccal to lingual through and through <clears throat> So what we are doing here is we are trying to extend from the label to the lingual aspect by breaking the contact point and while we do this we always tend to keep a small lip of enamel so that this prevents any damage to the adjacent teeth. Later once the preparation is done this lip of enamel can be removed using a hatchet or a probe. So as you can see it is always used in a vertical sawing motion fine strokes are applied it is never kept in one single position you can see the lip of enamel getting formed over there so that lip of lip portion can be removed using a probe or a, a hatchet So once the contact point is broken using the needle diamond, we again use the flattened tapered diamond to extend the label preparation or to connect the label preparation to the interproximal preparation. So one thing to keep in mind is when we do this process, there should be no step at the mesial or the distal line angle. It should be smooth and continuous transition from the label to the interproximal aspect. So that lip of enamel while I am using this flattened taper diamond will get lost by itself but at the same time it is going to protect the adjacent teeth from any sort of damage. There should be no step and the shoulder margin that is being placed both mesially and distally should be at the same level of the gingiva if it is an equigingival margin or subgingivally if you are pl planning for a subgingival margin. So after I am done with my labial and interproximal, I will move on to the lingual reduction now. So I am using a flattened tapered diamond to do the lingual reduction. So this is the most tricky and the challenging part of this preparation because you are going to do it in indirect vision. So the technique that I follow is, I do my lingual reduction in two halves. One, first I focus only on the mesial half, that means I start from the midline and I move towards only the mesial aspect. I keep checking my preparation using the mirror so I do not touch the distal aspect so I fo first form only the mesial half of the lingual axial wall so you have to keep uh, checking using the mirror and the mirror needs to be kept dry so what I do is I try to keep my mirror as far away as possible from the preparation by this technique, I make sure that my mirror remains dry and I get a long time to view at the preparation. So once I'm confident of my mesial preparation, I move on to the distal half of the lingual axial wall. I slightly tilt the patient towards me. Now here you will be seeing that I'll be moving only from the midline towards the distal aspect of the reduction. So the same rule applies, there should be no step, no undercut, should be a smooth transition from the lingual to the interproximal surface. I am drying my mirror and I want to check, you can see clearly how far my mirror is placed from the area that I am working at.
and one more trick is to keep the burr as parallel as possible to the long axis of the tooth. Check using the mirror again, you can see my lingual axial wall is formed well. You can see at all times my burr is parallel to the long axis and I am not tilting it at any aspect. Now once I am sure about my lingual preparation and I know that the final thing that I have to do over there is just finishing and polishing, I will move on to my incisal reduction. So here for the incisal reduction, I am just using my flattened tapered diamond itself or you can also use a wheel diamond uh, burr also. So the reason why I like to do my incisal reduction at the end is the incisal preparation should be at least 1 mm in width from the buckle to the lingual aspect. The width of that incisal surface should be 1 mm. So what happens when I do my incisal preparation at the beginning itself is if I if I overdo my lingual I mean labial or the lingual preparation it becomes a knife edged margin. So I don't want a knife edged incisal surface so I do my incisal preparation always towards the end so that I get that neat and nice 1 mm width of the incisal reduction. So here I am doing the finishing of the finish lines I am making sure there is no step there is no undercuts and the finish line is equigingival throughout the preparation labial interproximally and lingually. I am removing if there are any small undercuts or steps in my preparations. So what you are seeing over here is me depicting how to do a lingual fossa reduction. It is done using an American football diamond burr. So you have to place it parallel to the long axis of the tooth, no doubt about it. It does not change at any, any step of the preparation. The burr has to be placed parallel to the long axis. And the lingual fossa reduction needs to be done very smoothly and only to a certain amount. There is no, you do not have to overdo this lingual fossa reduction. And once this fossa reduction is done, your lingual preparation is complete. So after finishing the entire preparation using a fine needle diamond which comes in a yellow color coating, this is how the entire preparation has to look like with no undercuts, smooth surfaces, no sharp line angles, 1 mm width of the incisal thickness, 2 mm height reduction on the incisal aspect, 6 to 12 degrees taper on the interproximal surfaces with 2 mm axial wall height and a lingual fossa reduction. So I hope this video was helpful in understanding the all ceramic preparation to receive a all ceramic restoration on the maxillary central incisor. Thank you.